Okay, hi everybody. Uh, today I am going to give you a walkthrough on this asset here and the, the pipeline that I use to be able to get content going all the way from asset creation tools such as Maya, ZBrush, uh, through to Unreal. And uh, hopefully by the end of the session you'll you'll get a feel as to whether or not I have a clue of what I'm talking about or not. Okay, uh, let, let's, let's get into it. So uh, here we are back in Maya and uh, this is the, the same tractor that you just previewed over there in Unreal. And as you can tell, uh, there's no uh, materials going on there at the moment. I mean, even the materials on this here, uh, they're, they're flipped the wrong way. The UVs are, aren't, aren't right on that side. Uh, but, you know, this is the asset creation tool. So this is all just the rough work, just the raw uh, assets themselves uh, without any um, redetailing on them. Uh, moving over from there, going into Substance Painter, this is where uh, we start to try and bring things together. Um, the, the general idea is that we need a series of what we call texture maps, um, which are going to contain the, the details needed by the physically based uh, shader or physically based renderer in order to give us that kind of near to photorealism that uh, it's so renowned for. Uh, so as you can tell, if you look here, got a bit of, not, not necessarily grime, but th this, this does look significantly different to what we have over in Maya. So I'll just rock back a second. If you notice there are no details here, this is just, um, just, a, just a straightforward mesh, uh, quite, quite low. Uh, spec in terms of the, the amount of verts that's been utilized yeah and that's a, that's the topology I'm not sure if you can actually get a good readout on that uh, on the screencast but uh, that, that's what we're working with at the moment and when we bring it over in here I can augment what we call the normal map and the, the normal map help, helps us to capture things like height information um, that the um, the engine will interpret as though there was actually a geometry there so uh, let's go ahead and see if I can uh, detail what I've got here. So if I was to go ahead and switch this layer off, let's give it a chance to catch up with us there. There you go. Immediately all the extra decal that we had on there a while ago goes away. Uh, that's because I'm recording the, the, the normal information, or at least the changes that I'm making to the height information in the normal map on this layer. Uh, if I go ahead and remove that layer, it reveals the underlying metal that's been defined. Um, my roughness again, so if I, if I was to switch that off and switch that off, that's pretty shiny. Yeah. So I've got a base layer uh, further down in the, the, in the pipeline that defines my metal and obviously I've got my decal here and I've got my roughness here. So if I go ahead and, and put it back on, there's my roughness going on. There's my decal. And then there's my paint information. And I can actually go through the different channels. So this is roughness, metallic, ambient occlusion, user defined channel. I've got some splats, splat maps going on there. Um, not sure if that's the right terminology. Uh, some zombie blood artifacts few squiggle lines just to, to have a, a, an extra map going in. Uh, my emissive channel, I've got lights there that's going to use emissive and uh, some further lights on the back there for emissive. And uh, then we, we're going to go back and we have the base color. So if I bring it all together, that's what we have and then that's going to be Substance Painter. So from there, I'm going to want to take the, the assets across. I'm going to export these. So here uh, within the asset export, um, I've got, I can do an, an Unreal Engine uh, packed. So if we're doing some channel packing, I can do additional maps. Um, I could go into Unity if I was doing some Unity work, which I'm not, or I've got a predefined um, configuration back here, uh, which I can go ahead and, and grab my extra channels and put them in and, and send them across. Yeah, I've, I call them scratch leaks and splats. Don't worry. <laughs> that's just, that's just user defined. Uh, okay. So from there, we're going to go over into substance designer 
which should be open. And then, so that same tractor body has been taken across now. As you notice, it looks significantly different. Uh, reason being, I've gone ahead and I've taken the those uh, those materials that we were working with within Painter, or I was working with within, within Painter, and I'm, I'm doing uh, a whole lot of additional attribute configuration in here that's going to be able to give me the ability to be able to override that real time within unreal without necessarily having need to, to come back in here and uh regenerate a, a whole different uh configuration every time i want to change the materials so uh let, let's give you a very high level example here so say for example i want to uh increase the wear and tear on this go ahead in and do some tweaks there straight away i'm able to reveal the underlying um material that's been defined within here um, just by um, using this parameter here now this takes a fair bit of work because you're going through and you know using the normal maps and the ambient occlusion various other uh, masks so on and so forth um, we go through we we take what we want from the base color mat and we, we set up these overrides and all of these are parameterized um, so I can come in here and I can change my, my overall color. I don't necessarily want to do that right now, but just to give you a very quick illustration, uh, just tweak one of them, like, just like that, I can, I'll be able to do that within Unreal as well. So let's roll that back because, uh, yeah, I like the yellow. Um, so I have the ability to override the different sections of this, uh, this vehicle, uh, by doing that, uh, then we define the base color. What's the base color we want to utilize? We want to be able to have some edge wear going on. Um, and I apply the edge wear utilizing this particular node. Um, I, I won't talk you through the actual details of each node, but just a general idea. The dirt layer, the leaks, the splats, the scratches. Um, again, taking in different masks and passing that information down the pipeline. And then we get to these nodes here, which are going to expose the, the core map mats or materials that we want to get across into unreal so i mean i'm only giving you a very very high level uh idea of what, what we can do here but uh if i just quickly just uh put a few bits and bobs in on here so um show that and loops it's true so go on ahead and put that in and it's just augmenting what's already there um, in a non-destructive way. So I can always roll that back. Uh, it looks like we've had a, a zombie run in uh, somewhere in Birmingham. And uh, this uh, particular vehicle may have been utilized to clear up the, the zombies. Um, I mean, I don't have a preference <laughs> to any genre, but um, you know, it's just to kind of illustrate what we're able to do within the tool. Again, when I say we, I'm talking the royal we. So uh, I hope you forgive me if, uh, <laughs> if we're not making that clear. Okay, so um, right. Straight on from there, we're going to go back to Unreal now. And hopefully what you're able to see here will, will make a lot more sense based on what we've already done. So here I have the same parameters that are coming from the Substance Designer tool. And uh, I can go ahead and if I'm looking at the right one, I should be able to make a, a fair few changes here. Um, uh, at least let me give you a bit of a driving demo first. So let's just play this here. Right. So the vehicle that I'm utilizing here now, it is, It's got a, uh, a different configuration to the other vehicle. Uh, but this is just to show that, you know, this is actual functional asset. Uh, right. So that's just a quick uh, drive through. Uh, just to show you know that these, this is actually functional. Right. So here we have this specific uh, vehicle and its configuration here is using tractor mat one which I know is a uh, derived from this instance here so if I just get that open up 
and let's see if we can start making some tweaks. So I want to have the frame have a different color. I'm doing this uh, offline here, but uh, just to illustrate what we can do. So I'm changing this to more of a green. Let's make it a light green. Not that anybody really drives green tractors. Uh, let's let's change this color here to a I don't know. That's a bit. Uh, let's find a more pleasing color, right? So it's a bit more of an orange color, and uh, try and get a similar color going for uh, the the rest of the vehicle as well. Yeah. Right. So, change a few of the colors. I'm going to put some of the, the additional maps on uh, as we've done previously. We've got the, the, the zombie reference there. Let's see if we can expose some of the details on, on this map here. So metal rough and then metal wear. So again, just try and get this on here. See if I can get some of these uh, values visible to you. Same time. And all of this is real time. I thought it was going a bit. And as I'm making these changes, these values are calculated in the background using the Substance Engine uh, based on the, the graph that was put together in Substance Designer that we previously stepped through. So straight away, that's configured and I can play and I, I probably don't want to spawn directly on top of that vehicle. And that's that that vehicle is ready to go. Right, so that's my walkthrough on the PBR workflow and uh, the capabilities that are available to us within the tool. Um, hopefully, I've been able to illustrate that I've got a broad, relatively broad range in terms of actual. Um, the PBR uh, pipeline. That being said, I'm not an expert on Unreal. I'm not even an expert on Substance Painter. I just know how to bring assets through from um, from start through to actual running within the engine there. Um, my target audience for the stuff that I'm putting together is primarily uh, toddlers. So this is stuff that would be uh, recorded. Actually, I'm going to see if I'm, uh, I can uh, open that project now. So I'm going to stop this now because, you know, probably running low on memory at the moment. And then we're going to fire it up again and, and try and give you a step through on some of the other work that we've done that's going to give you uh, a a reasonable idea as to what we, we can do once we actually render output. So bear with me a sec, we're going to stop here and, and, and start back up in the other project.